purpose of this conference looking for in focusing on ontology. Ontology as a general subject is concerned with the nature of being of anything. The dictionary defines it as a set of concepts and categories in a subject area or a domain that shows their properties and the relations between them. When you escalate that examination to the ontology of a leader and the effective exercise of leadership uh, model, you're talking about the nature and the function of being a leader and the actions of effective leadership. The ontology of a leader therefore is the being of a human being. Who is one is being shapes one's perceptions, emotions, creative imaginations, thinking, planning, and consequently one's actions in the exercise of leadership. You're talking about a leader and the effective exercise of leadership as one is natural self-expression, which does not come from just learning and, and trying to emulate the characteristics or styles of noteworthy leaders, or learning what effective leaders do and trying to emulate them. You are most certainly not talking about a leader from merely being in leadership position or a position of authority, important as all those may be in the shaping of an effective leader. Most leaders are managers of other people's properties, physical or intellectual. They are managers of properties they have no proprietary interest in. They are therefore trustees and stewards. The goal of property owners who employ managers is earning profit, and great profits at that. If I understand it well, the organizers of this workshop are directing us to a leadership style that is different from the traditional ones we are used to. They are looking for a leader who in their, like the one in their mean who, Ehad, Jason, and uh, Granger, in their book on ontological, phenomenological uh, model, describe as one, and I quote, who is not thinking as a leader, but being a leader as a natural form of self-expression, end of quote. One, and I quote, who doesn't turn on or off a leadership switch, but responds and acts spontaneously and intuitively as a leader to any situation that requires the exercise of leadership, end of quote. The, the organizers of this workshop are looking for a leadership quality that is centered on the nature of one's being. The nature of one's inner being that will effortlessly find expression or manifest itself in one's uh, deportment and actions. That's not all. The organizers of this uh, workshop are looking for leadership, a leadership quality that comes from one's being that will on, uh, not only be effortlessly manifest, but, but also one that will be will phenomenal. You will see the problem. <laughs> Phenomenologically <laughs> effective and therefore easy to achieve the target of profits and the, and the great profits are that, as well as uh, one that will serve as a role model. I want to post that the inner being of a person relates to one's value system. One can be a great leader and make great profits for oneself or one's employer through corruption. That is not a leadership style worth emulating, and that is not the leadership style that this workshop is interested in. 
The goal of this workshop is to get views for the development of a natural leadership quality or a style that is not only remarkable, outstanding, and profound, but it's also one that, as I've said, can stand out as a role model. I want to post that such a leadership is one that is first and foremost grounded on a value system that fully embraces integrity, humility, and respect for others. Integrity denotes honesty and moral uprightness. In his book, Developing the Leaders Around You, John Maxwell defines integrity, and I quote, as the truthfulness and solid character at consistent words and, and work, end of quote. Integrity comes from, the, from a congruence between thoughts, feelings, words, and actions when all that you are and do spring from your core values. True leadership, uh, true leaders demonstrate integrity by their actions. Mahatma Gandhi was one of the greatest examples of integrity we have seen in modern times. And many moving stories about his life demonstrate the power of teaching this character trait by example. Men and women of integrity are those whose word can be depended upon in any situation. Trust and confidence are the foundation of, uh, of every business relations they engage in. In my view, that's a value system of great, if not absolute, honesty. As we know, in the present world, teamwork is inevitable. The organizers of this conference are looking for a leadership quality that has not only what, what John Maxwell calls the ability to influence others, but also a leadership that the late Stephen Covert, in his book, uh, Primary Greatness, characterized as having the ability of communicating to others, of communicating to another person their worth and potential so clearly that they are inspired to see it in themselves, end of quote. The organizers of this conference are looking for the leadership that has the humility to see value in others and patiently seek to nurture and unleash that potential. That is a leadership quality that has respect for others irrespective of their positions in society or institution they are working for. True leadership is not, on, is not only necessary in private enterprise. True leadership is even more critical in the management of public affairs. In other words, the character traits of integrity, humility, and respect for others divine the nature and the effectiveness of service delivery to the public. Why is this the case? One or two illustrations, in my view, would suffice. A few readers are entrusted with power and authority that they are supposed to exercise for the common good of their communities or their countries. Here in Kenya, the Constitution provides that all sovereign power belongs to the people who have delegated, it to the exercise, who have delegated its exercise to the three arms of government and constitutional commissions. Time does not allow me to examine the kind of power and authority entrusted to each organ of state. So please allow me to briefly illustrate the kind of leadership that I think this workshop is seeking to manage the authority or power entrusted to the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. That is the exercise of judicial authority. The judiciary, as one of the three arms of government, is the custodian of the constitution and the rule of law. The, the judicial authority entrusted the judiciary of interpreting the constitution and other statutory uh, authority 
as well as ensuring that the, the rule of law is maintained in the conduct of the societal affairs, both public and private, requires its exercise in the prism of the national values enumerated in Article 10 of our Constitution. These include patriotism, national unity, sharing and the devolution of power, the rule of law, democracy, and the public participation. They include human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, and human rights. They also include good governance, integrity, transparency, accountability, and a sustainable development. In other words, the Kenyan constitution requires to be a man of integrity to resolve the disputes placed before me in a transparent and accountable manner. These are the self-same values which, as I have said, this workshop is seeking to instill. In addition, as the Chief Justice and the leader of the, judici of the judiciary, I understand the Constitution to require of me to provide servant leadership grounded on the said national values, foremost of which, for purposes of this workshop, is integrity. In other words, I should provide a leadership that is Asante sana kwa kutazama wa Source TV. Kama uja subscribe na kuombu weze kusubscribe. Kama ume subscribe na sema asante sana. Uneza finya notification bell. Ndi wakati wote tunapata bari kama hii unakuwa wakuanza kuipata. Hadi wakati mwingine na kutakia mchana ama usiku muema. Asante sana.